We've looked back quite a bit during this programme. Let's look forward with Jared Diamond, Pulitzer Prize winning author, the writer of Guns, Germs and Steel, among other books, books about human behaviour and its development over the millennia. In May last year, at the beginning of the pandemic, he wrote about how the world has two options, to join together to fight the virus or instead continue our doomed attempts to solve global problems one country at a time. Jared J Diamond joins us and appreciate your time. Um, are you feeling, as you look at vaccines being rolled out, are you feeling optimistic as you see science prevailing or are you feeling pessimistic as you see countries bickering over who gets what? I will exasperate you as I exasperate most interviewers. Um, it's a middle answer. I'm more optimistic than I was two months ago before I got vaccinated. Um, on the other hand, do I think that problems are going to go away? Of course not, no, because we don't know how long the protection of our vaccines will last. We don't know how people will behave in other countries. Um, we don't know about new variants. So it's better than it was in January, and it's less good than it was a year ago. Did you understand how long it was all going to last, Jared? Because, uh, you know, I, I guess one of the things I had in my mind a year ago when we entered the first lockdown was lockdowns last for maybe three weeks, and then you've nailed it, and you can begin to drift out again. But it's really not turned out like that at all. No, and I don't think anybody... Uh, if anybody made a prediction a year ago... Um, one should immediately have said they're liars because you can't make predictions when there were big unknowns. The big unknowns included the behavior of people. Here I am in California, and California is a rational state, but there are lots of Californians who refuse to wear masks and proceed to get infected. So that was unpredictable. The properties of the virus were unpredictable. The properties of vaccines unpredictable. We couldn't make a prediction then, and we can't make a prediction now. Let me ask you for a prediction. If another pandemic comes along, and, and, and let's be honest, there, there are plenty of reasons to think these things come along in a, you know, from time to time. Do you think we'll, in the West, deal with it better next time now we've had this experience? Well, that's, that's a key question. Let me first respond to your beginning with if, if another pandemic um, comes on. That's like asking me if you, Jared, will die before the age of 150. Of course, I'll die before the age of 150. And of course, new pandemics will come on. The reason I say that is that the emerging diseases of the last 50 years, like AIDS and Ebola and Marburg and SARS, they're all diseases of animals that jumped from, from animals to humans, um, as was the case with COVID. And as long as we have contact with animals, there are going to be more jumps. The biggest danger are the close contacts between humans and wild animals in Southeast Asia, particularly in animal markets and in the trade for traditional medicines. That's how SARS jumped. That's probably how COVID jumped. So when you say if there are future diseases, of course there are going to be future diseases. Mm. But we, I'm, I guess I'm interested in whether we will be more we will be prepared for the next pandemic much better than the one because we'll have a recent memory of one. Whereas there are lots of other things that may hit the world and we may not be prepared for those because we won't have had a recent experience of them. Both of those things are true. And let, let me give you um, two models. One model is how I behave. I do my field work on the island of New Guinea in the jungle. Um, and I've had many close calls. From my work in New Guinea, I've learned an attitude of what I call constructive paranoia. Um, paranoia is a disease, um, an unfortunate condition, which is um, generally unfortunate. But in New Guinea, you got to be paranoid. You got to think of everything that can go wrong. And that's the attitude that the world needs. There's actually a country that practices constructive paranoia. It's the country of Finland, Scandinavian country of Finland. The Finns had very bad experiences in World War II when they were attacked by the Soviet Union and their trade was cut off. And the result is that the Finnish government um, has committees which meet every month. Um, each month, the committee thinks of everything possible that could go wrong. They think of the electric net breaking, breaking down. They think of the financial barriers breaking down. They think of borders. And of course, one month they thought of the possibility of diseases. So a few years ago, the Finns stockpiled masks. The United States didn't stockpile masks because we don't practice constructive paranoia and think of everything that goes wrong. So the world needs more constructive paranoia, and Finland is a good 
model that it actually works at the country level. It's funny you should say that because actually Britain thought it was practicing constructive paranoia, had national risk register, they thought about all these things, and we were still woefully badly prepared when we were actually hit by something. Everybody has a plan until they get a punch in the teeth, as uh, Mike Tyson said. I guess you weren't paranoid enough. <laughs> right. Um, just a last one. Do you think, and you've mentioned this zoonotic disease, the diseases coming from animals, and particularly from bats through to, to, to humans, do we change our relationship to animals, do you think, over the next century? Do we change our relationship to animals over the next century? We should change our relationship to animals tomorrow and in the next month. Uh, that's to say uh, we should not be coming into close contact um, with wild animals for what I would call frivolous purposes. That's to say the, the um, uh, game markets and the traditional animal trade. But I would regard the main lesson from COVID um, as being the lesson that global problems need global solutions. If one country eliminates COVID within its boundaries, as Vietnam, New Zealand, and Australia did or nearly did, they're just going to get reinfected from other countries. So the world is not going to be safe against COVID until every country is safe against COVID. Okay. But there's a big lesson there. It's the lesson that the world also has global problems from climate change, that Britain, the UK, is not going to be safe against climate change if you lower if, if, carbon if no, dioxide levels Jared over Britain. Diamond. We need to leave it there. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Well, how's the country doing at the end of this year? On this day, we thought we'd like to hear from some fellow citizens with a variety of experiences. So we